Coming up, the 71-year-old farmer who fought off an intruder after receiving several blows to the head and nearly losing an eye. Why letting the train take the strain could be a pain for clumsy parkers. And we're calling her Ballroom Bowl after her efforts strictly for local charities. Tonight, what happened when a suspected burglar was confronted by a 71-year-old farmer? That's next. Now the latest from ITV News Central in the Midlands. Welcome to the programme. Our headlines tonight Battered and bruised, the farmer who nearly lost an eye after being brutally attacked by an intruder. As the Tories announce a new benefits freeze in Birmingham, TV star White D says David Cameron is out of touch. Look at the people who are part of the system. There are different people from working class, middle class, even some upper class. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. The selfish few putting lives at risk, a new crackdown on illegal parking at railway stations. And was she the dancing queen? How our presenter Balvinda got on in a Strictly spin-off. Good evening. Police are hunting a suspected burglar who hit a 71-year-old man so hard he nearly lost his eye. The victim, a farmer, heard a noise in the early hours and went outside to be confronted by the attacker. Well, today the farmer told our correspondent Mark Goff that he's keen to get back to work on the farm if his family will let him. Mark Goff's report includes images of his injuries. Robert Withers is 71. Three weeks ago... A suspected burglar did this to him. Six or seven blows to the head, possibly with an iron bar. He nearly lost his eye. Robert was woken in the early hours by a noise at his farm in Hales Owen. Despite being in his 70s, he went outside and came face to face with his attacker. I moved towards him and uh, the next thing I received a severe blow across my face. That was the first blow and uh, it, it immediately split my, my eyebrow and uh, I was bleeding profusely. Blood was running all down my face and running into my other eye and I was virtually uh, out of the game. And uh, he was raining blows on me head so I grappled with him. Please have this CCTV of the suspect. He's white, stocky, in his early 40s, and he was wearing a dark, sleeveless bomber jacket over a checked shirt and dark trousers. He said he was from Bartley Green, which is nearby. In the attack, he also broke Robert's arm and rained blows on his skull. How do you feel now? I'm feeling a lot better than I was, obviously, uh, within, uh, within hours of the uh, incident. But uh, hopefully I'm making a bit of progress. Are you back to work yet? Uh, not quite. I've been uh, uh, banned by the family. But if you could, you'd go back to work? Well, I potter about as and when they need my advice. Advice from a wise and brave man. Mark Goff, ITV News, Hales Owen. Motorists who use car parks at railway stations and don't follow the rules could have a nasty surprise as from today. £100 penalties are being brought in for anyone who doesn't use the marked bays correctly. Bosses at Centro say irresponsible drivers are causing chaos, even putting lives at risk. Keith Wilkinson reports. Dodgy parking, it seems, is catching. Once one does it, a whole load of others follow suit as in this CCTV from Wensbury Parkway, where driver after driver line up to park outside the marked bays. And at the Hawthorns, one driver parks up on the grass, and along comes a copycat. This driver decided to park up right in the main entrance. 
Selly Oak Station, Birmingham, this morning. And it doesn't take us long to spot cars parked like this. On a pavement, and later, right next to it, a car on double yellow lines, making it hard for others to pass. There have been uh, problems or cases where uh, the, the, the roads to and from the station buildings uh, have been blocked. Uh, make, making it difficult for uh, larger vehicles to get through. Uh, we've had the case of a, a rail replacement coach uh, at Starbridge. Uh, worst case scenario would be that that coach could have been an ambulance or a fire engine. From today at West Midland railway stations and Midland Metro car parks, people parking outside marked bays face £100 fines. Some have decided to avoid the hassle and go by bike to get on the train. So you've come by bike? Yes. Do you find it difficult to come by bike? No, it's pretty easy to be honest. It's, it's quite easy to get to. I only live down the road and it's quite easy to get onto the train with as well. So it's not too bad. What do you think about them bringing in these uh, £100 fines from today to, to clamp down on people? Bit of a worry really because uh, I think you could do with some more spaces here or a bigger car park built somewhere else because a lot of people commute from this car park into town every day. Have you ever considered uh, actually walking here or anything like that? I have walked here in summer, um, but I think as the days go on and the chance of it raining, I, I tend to park here. Well, sometimes it's caused problems, you miss trains and things like that because you just can't get into a space. You can't get round the car park to find somewhere to park. Many commuting here say train fares are too high, but for those who park like this in future, the cost could be an awful lot higher. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News. Well, these new finds have got you talking. Philip Jones from Birmingham said the solution to bad parking would be to tow the cars away and give massive fines. He says that would stop it. Yes, and Kerry Slevin from Coventry said, I can't park at my station, so I've now taken to cycling to the station as it's less stress. Kev Kelly from Birmingham said bigger car parks should be built claiming it's not rocket science. And Paula Wilkinson from Darleston agrees. She said people are given the park and ride facility to keep cars out of towns and cities. Now this, if people are having to park like this, then just maybe there's not enough parking available. And Laura Goff from Warsaw said this policy should be everywhere, not just on stations. Thanks for all your views. A carpet warehouse in Birmingham has been destroyed in an arson attack in the early hours of this morning. More than 70 firefighters tackled the fire at its peak. It broke out shortly before 3 a.m. at a carpet and supply store in Reddings Lane in Tisley. Nearby Yardley's school is closed for the day and several roads in the area are still shut. Police have confirmed that a man who was found lying in a Wolverhampton street had been stabbed to death. The man, who's believed to be in his 20s, was found in Trainham Close on Saturday night. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police are appealing for witnesses. Male, aged 21, died in tragic circumstances of a, st of a stab wound. Um, we're appealing for anybody that was in the Trenham Close area of Wolverhampton around 9.30 on Saturday when we got the call. They may have seen something which could help us catch the people or person responsible for this. White D, the star of the controversial show Benefit Street, has accused the Prime Minister of demonising welfare claimants. She was speaking at a fringe event in Birmingham where the Conservatives are holding their annual party conference. Well, in reply, David Cameron said it was only right that if people could work, they should work. Our political correspondent Alison McKenzie reports. She was the unlikely folk hero of the TV documentary. White D from James Turner Street in Birmingham has defended those stuck on benefits. What might she say to the Prime Minister, who she accuses of demonising claimants unfairly? He needs to actually look at the people who are part of the system. There are different people from working class, middle class, even some upper class. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, Mr Cameron. So when ITV News Central spoke to the Prime Minister today, demonize I put those White D's question to, to him. I don't demonise people on welfare, I just have a very simple rule. Those who can, should. Those who can't, we always help. And that is how we should run our benefit system. People who are genuinely disabled, who can't find work, we should support them and help them. I think Benefit Street was actually 
a, a fascinating and very interestingly put together program. I caught a little bit of it uh, on the TV. And you know, there are examples there of some people who could, uh, with the right training, sometimes with a lot of extra help, could work and actually it would give them and their families a better standard of living and more dignity to work. Well, Alison joins us uh, in the studio. Now, Alison, there's been some both positive news for the city as well. Well, there has. It's a big event with the Conservatives arriving in the city, and there have been some concern that they may not come back. There was a doubt whether they're just going to Manchester in future, but they announced uh, to ground a claim uh, late, late last night that they've secured a three-conference deal, taking the Conservatives right through to 2020. So more importantly for us here uh, in the Midlands, it means lots of money coming in. This is what Mr Cameron had to say to me today about that. Look, it's Britain's second city. I think you can see it being transformed in front of our eyes. I've been coming to conferences here for many years now. Actually, for instance, watching the Birmingham Library grow up in front of my eyes has been uh, incredibly exciting. Uh, it's a great hall to speak in. It's a, it's a very good city for a conference. And we love coming here. And it's £50 million coming into the Birmingham economy. I'm glad I got that in. So, Alison, what else is coming up? When the conference, well, he himself speaking to us tonight, but he's also planning his big speech. He's reaching out not just to those in Birmingham, the West Midlands, but to beyond to prove that they do really have a chance of uh, challenging at the next election. He's aware of the UKIP threat. Uh, he'll want to put that down. And we'll hear more from him later in the week, as well as other fringe events. Lots more happening right across the conference. Okay, Alison, thank you very much. Thank you.